One of my favourite video games is Spec Ops The Line from 2012. It was a big budget military shooter, kind of like Call of Duty. It didn't do very well, but many gamers still talk about it, including me, because the narrative arc, the storyline, did something that no game has done as well before or since. It's certainly the most anti-war, big budget war game I've ever played by miles. It shows military intervention as horrifying, confusing and pointless, but also as the characters and player go on, they question more and more about what they're doing, yet they can't stop. One common reading of Spec Ops that you see around calls to mind the famous line from war games, the only way to win is not to play. And it stuck with me for many reasons. One of them is that um, no other game has inspired me to bore as many people at as many parties as Spec Ops The Line, but also that it was an astonishingly brave thing for a big budget game publisher to do. It's astonishingly anti-commercial. And I was thinking about that this week because a week ago Microsoft finally released, after a year of training it, Microsoft Flight Simulator, the latest version of the 40-year-old franchise um, made with a Sobo studio. They have been trailing it for a year, showing astonishing videos of hyper-realistic flight that you can fly literally all around the globe. Um, and I've installed it. I actually installed it on my computer on Sunday. I've been playing about five to ten hours this week, and so far have never actually made it as far as the cockpit of a plane. It's all been achingly slow updates, weirdly unnavigable menus and crashes, and yet somehow I've persisted. And only now, when thinking about it, do I realise how daring Microsoft have been. Just like Mornings in Crescent or Dwarf Fortress, Microsoft Flight Simulator is a giant piece of collaborative fiction. The game from the trailers doesn't actually exist. Everything you've seen in social media has been created by fans collaborating to keep the illusion alive using a combination of Google Earth, SketchUp and Gary's model. The postmodernist philosopher Jean Baudrillard um, famously wrote a book, Simulacra, about um, what happens when you can confuse the simulation with the thing being simulated. And I bring it up because unlike almost every other book of philosophy, I've read it. Um, and what Microsoft has done has gone even further, which is to give us a simulation more elusive than the thing being simulated. They've persuaded me that it would actually be easier to get behind the controls of a real 787 than to fly one on my computer. And why would Microsoft do this? Well, because they're saving us. Firstly, it's an alternate reality game, bingy enough to rival QAnon. Um, but more importantly, in these months of end confinement and being unable to separate the virtual from the real, Microsoft is reminding us that the real world is still worth striving for, that although the computer... Oh, you get the rest.